Hey guys, it's Cinti Reads, and as you can see by the video title, today I'll be reading and reacting to Shane Dawson's book, I Hate My Selfie. If you somehow made it to this video and don't know who Shane Dawson is, I recommend you watch any of the numerous videos that chronicle his history on YouTube. The Cliff Notes version is that Shane has engaged in problematic behavior such as perpetuating harmful racial stereotypes, including literally doing blackface and saying the N-word, making jokes about diddling animals. I lay the cat down on her back <laughs> and then I, I, I move her little chicken legs, like, you know, spread open or whatever. And I was like, if I just like hump, but like on her tummy, like that's not weird. Like Making jokes about diddling kids. Oh my God. Here's my justification for pedophilia. I can't. Being exceptionally rude to his friends. And then the whole day, we have to like pretend like you're dead. And every time you say one of your like crappy Harry Potter jokes. <laughs> I'll just go. Being exceptionally rude to the cast and crew on his movie sets. So if we just like lose that, I'm just saying. I'm not taking anything out of the movie to please a bunch of out of work actors in Pittsburgh who should be lucky to get an audition for a feature film. I, I could keep going, but that isn't the point of this video. Just keep in mind Shane did all of those things while repeatedly claiming to be an empath and that his bad behavior is not all from some long ago past version of himself. So I've learned I'm an empath, right? <laughs> In 2015, Simon & Schuster published Shane Dawson's book, I Hate My Selfie. It is a memoir-style essay collection where Shane recounts 18 of his, quote, most embarrassing and most inspiring life stories. His next book, It Gets Worse, was published the following year in 2016 and follows a similar format. If the name Simon & Schuster is familiar, that's because they publish a lot of books by YouTubers and other influencers and have been criticized for doing that. The general consensus is that their books, specifically the ones for YouTubers and other influencers, tend to be poorly edited despite having the backing of a huge publishing house, which causes them to come off as a quick cash grab. Simon & Schuster have also been criticized for giving a platform to problematic people like Shane Dawson. Shane's problematic behavior was well known before his books were released, but his big cancellation wouldn't come until around 2018. He has made numerous apologies for his behavior, but his sincerity has been highly debated. Hi. <laughs> I learned piano during my break. <laughs> Kidding, I didn't learn anything. <laughs> Again, there are other videos out there if you want to learn more about that. I want to make it known that I have read both of Shane's books before, and I used to be a fan of him. I started pulling away during his series with Graveyard Girl when it took like three whole episodes for her to actually show up and get to the point of the series. That's all besides the point. I just want it to be clear that I am no longer a fan of Shane. I don't remember much of Shane's books, but even reading it as a fan back then, I remember feeling off about certain parts of them. Like some parts went too far and I can't remember specifically, so we'll get into that in the reaction here soon. But Shane often brushes off his past bad behavior as him being young and dumb but he was well into his 20s when he wrote these books, certainly old enough to know better in my opinion. He also often says that he uses humor to cope with this trauma, which I totally understand, but I think he takes it way too far. I'm getting ahead of myself though. That's enough context for now. Let's jump right into I Hate My Selfie. Oh, with your hair back and forth. Oh, oh. Jesus Christ. <laughs> this book is dedicated to my hilarious and caring mother. Thank you for giving me so much unconditional love and fuck you for giving me your fat arms and wonky eye. <laughs> we're okay. Uh, we're already starting right in with like the self-deprecation, which Shane is known for, which I don't know is the healthiest coping mechanism. All right, so we've got this disclaimer about the art. I have a lot of really talented fans, so I thought it would be fun to ask some of them to create pictures inspired by the essays. I sent each of them an excerpt and asked him or her to draw whatever they felt like. As you will see, the results are sometimes amazing, sometimes hilarious, and always unflattering, considering I have a very hard face to draw. Okay, so we're opening right up into the first picture, which is like a drawing of Shane. It looks like the book cover, actually, but it's like a cracked iPhone. Whatever. It's an okay picture. Hi, I'm Shane Dawson. Some of you might know me from my videos on the internet. Well, I don't know if anybody would buy this book if they didn't know who Shane Dawson was. Some of you might know me from the movie I directed entitled Not Cool. Ooh, I hope you don't because that movie was a critical flop. And some of you might know me as the guy you saw on the cover of this book who has an incredibly punchable face. He has to know that only fans bought this book. I'm all of those things and more. I also have an incredibly punchable body, but none of you will ever get to see that. For the record, I don't really hate myself, but I do hate the way I portray myself online. We are getting a little bit of accountability here, maybe, but this was, again, before his big apology. So even back then, he was admitting he didn't like his portrayals he did. Hence, my selfie. See what I did there? 
Online, I'm this loud, outrageous, confident guy who acts like nothing bothers him and he has the whole world at his fingertips. Oh, so, okay. Sorry, I was ahead of myself. He's not actually taking accountability for anything. In reality, I'm a shy, quiet guy who would rather spend his nights lying in bed watching Netflix than being a valuable member of society. If I could spend my entire life underneath a heating blanket with a handful of my own ball- What? <laughs> I'm so- What? I gotta start over. If I could spend my entire life underneath a heating blanket with a handful of my own balls, I would happily do so. Um, I'm not a man. I don't have balls. Uh, is that something you guys do? Do you just cup your nuggets while you're hanging out? I'm not saying that I don't like the stuff I put out into the world because I genuinely enjoy my videos and think they are funny. Even the parts where I did blackface. Sorry, I added that. What I'm saying is that I embrace the fact that I have a punchable face and that if I could punch myself without feeling it, I would. Sometimes I scroll through my Instagram page and audibly groan. Then don't do that? What is the point of posting four pictures a day of yourself doing the same duck face in four different locations? Then don't post that! If you go through my Instagram feed, it's like a flip book of me thinking I'm way more attractive than I am. It's nauseating. I, okay, I mean, I guess at least he admits it. But feel free to follow me at Shane Dawson. You can also follow me on Twitter, where I post important tweets like, I think I just pooped blood. Should I go to the doctor? Never mind, just Google it. And ugh, is Emma Stone still a thing? Can that be over yet? Wait, hold on. Is there something wrong with Emma Stone? I don't, I don't understand why he's like specifically targeting her. Can that be over yet? It gets really deep. I'm a social warrior, clearly. Excuse me, what? Bitch, oh, he did not. Does he mean like a social justice warrior? Because bitch, he did not. Oh my god, he is delusional. In this book, you'll get to see the real me, not the me you see on YouTube. You will get to know what's really in my head, and I'm warning you, it's not pretty. I, Shane Yaw, my real name, go on record saying I am not a fucking pedophile. It's a twisted land of self-hatred, yeah, we know. Sadness, yeah, we know and lots of repressed anger towards every person who has ever hurt me. Yeah, we know. He's saying like all of this like it's not incredibly clear in his videos and that that's not the real him when he does act this way online. Enjoy. Don't worry, I threw in some dick and fart jokes to make the stories a little easier to handle. See, see, I told you he does the coping with humor thing and sometimes that works, but other times it just goes way too far. Kind of like mixing in some peanut butter with your medicine, which by the way, my mom used to do. You haven't lived till you've had a Vicodin peanut butter marshmallow fluff sandwich. Okay, Vicodin, wow, that's coming out the gate strong. I can still taste the numbing of my emotions, delicious. I urge you to sit back and enjoy and know that in the end, things have gotten better for me and they will for you too, if that's anything you're worried about. Feel free to laugh at my misfortune and get that feeling of, wow, my life is so much better than that, guys. Obviously joking, but semi-serious, Shane Dawson. Okay, but he's gonna completely gloss over the fact that he's a fucking millionaire now. He just, he still wants to maintain this persona of being like, an everyday dude and he's just not anymore and he doesn't ever really acknowledge that I feel like. But anyway, right into the first essay called My Destiny, spelled uh, not correctly, so I'm assuming destiny is a person, I don't remember. Uh, we've got a sketch of pink converse uh, standing on something, I can't tell, and there's scissors and some hair clippings on the ground. So maybe this person was getting a haircut, I have no idea. Nothing gives me more anxiety than getting a haircut. Oh, okay, so I was right about that previous picture then. Just the thought of going to a salon, I mean barber, and having a stranger touch my head while asking me personal questions about my life makes my nerves shoot through the roof. Okay, relatable, actually, same. It's the same feeling a wicker chair gets- Oh, no! It's the same feeling a wicker chair gets when a circa 2006 Kelly Clarkson takes a seat. Tense. What does that mean? Does it- Does- because Kelly Clarkson didn't gain weight until after then. It's, is this a fat joke? I can't tell what this joke is. But sometimes you have to bite the bullet and let Kelly Clarkson sit on your face. See, what? Okay. The day after my high school graduation was one of those times. I had rocked the same shoulder length frizzy do since I was 12 years old and the style had run its course. There was only so much I could do with it. Actually, there was only three things I could do with it. Wash it, let it air dry, and pray to God I didn't get lice. My hair was lice's dream habitat. The amount of poof and waves made it practically a tropical getaway for those little fuckers. I'm sure every time I walk by a homeless- Oh no, we're not gonna do this, are we? I'm sure every time I walk by a homeless dude, his lice would only wish they were having an adventure in my twisted, knotted labyrinth of a hairdo. Okay, so we're already gonna start with the stereotypes that all homeless people are dirty and have lice, uh, which he makes this joke frequently, which bothers me. I might not have had girls double-taking when I walked by, but damn it, the lice wanted a motherfucking piece. So one hot Monday afternoon in June of 2006, I pulled into a shopping center parking lot and stared at the supercut sign that was casting a shadow on my car. 
This was the day. I'd prepared myself for this moment for weeks, and I was ready. I took a deep breath, took a bite of a protein cookie, which, let's face it, was just a cookie, and stumbled through the door with fear in my eyes. Okay, um, I don't know if this was before or after his massive weight loss, so I don't know if this protein cookie thing is, like, his weight loss joke, whatever, I don't know. We'll get into that later, I guess. The woman at the register looked up at me with a welcoming smile and asked what she could do for me. I asked for a haircut. She paused, awkward silence. Then she said, women are men's. Yep, it was definitely time for a haircut. This is also a joke he makes a lot about being mistaken for a woman, uh, which you can decide for yourself if you think that's funny. She walked me over to the station and I looked around, scoping out what the situation was. The situation was pretty clear. These people had no fucking idea what they were doing and it smelled like El Pollo Loco had farted and locked the doors for two weeks. Well, bitch, you did go to Supercuts, so I don't know what you were expecting. No tea, no shade to people who work at Supercuts. I was too lazy to find another salon, I mean barber, so I just sat in a stained purple swivel chair and awaited my fate. Okay, so we've got this weird formatting for the dialogue. Receptionist. Destiny will be with you soon. She's in the back talking to her ex-husband on the phone. Me. Definitely didn't need all that information, but thank you. Um, okay, so I guess Destiny is a person, and this is reminding me one of my main issues with Shane Dawson's books is that this is supposed to be a memoir, so, um, what you're assuming is that this is the truth, but when he does include dialogue, it's very exaggerated and is clearly not what they actually said, which bothers me for a memoir, because, again, the goal is truth, but whatever. So I sat and flipped through a Spanish version of People magazine from 15 years ago, thinking, wow, I don't know who this Selena chick is, but she is definitely going places. Uh, okay. If you're too young to understand that joke, Selena is a pop star who was brutally murdered. And, uh, she definitely didn't go places because she was killed. So, I guess we're gonna go with that joke. As I skimmed through the magazine, my Razor phone started vibrating and playing Ashley Simpson's Pieces of Me. It was my mom calling. Me. Hey, mom. Mom. Did you do it yet? Me. No, still waiting. I think my stylist is in the middle of a custody battle right now. Mom. Oh, fun! Are you excited? Again, the dialogue is clearly not true to real life, even though this is supposed to be a true story. Me. Not really. I'm scared she's going to make me look like a troll doll. Mom. Aw, but you're my little troll doll. Me. Not really the response I was looking for, but thanks, Mom. Mom. Well, call me when you're done and email me a picture on your pager. Me. That makes no sense. Mom. Love you. Because we need a reminder that it's 2006. I feel like Shane Dawson is kind of stuck in the past and this is really reflecting that. As I reached for another decade-old magazine, my stylist, in quotes, walked up to greet me. Uh, okay, <laughs> and he's going to explain why he put it in quotes. I put stylist in quotes because her cosmetology certificate looked like it was printed on the back of a Denny's placemat. My expectations for this haircut were about the same as when I walk into an Eddie Murphy movie. I know it's going to be bad, but maybe it will give people a few laughs. What? I'm so lost. I, okay, so part of my problem with reading this is that, like, every other line is a joke, so it kind of bogs down this story because, like, put your jokes in. Jokes are great. But, like, every other line is a fucking joke. Get to the point. I like to spread joy even if it's at my expense. I looked her up and down, and my expectations went from an Eddie Murphy movie to any Adam Sandler film made after 2008. This situation was Grown Ups bad. Okay, I've never seen Grown Ups, but I don't like Adam Sandler. It looked like she had cut her hair without scissors and had instead chosen to cover her head in peanut butter and raw meat and hang upside down from a tree branch in a dog park. Wow, I don't know why that was so hard for me to read, but also it's just like, it's too much. She was wearing one of those shitty Halloween shirts that said, this is my costume. Did I mention it was June? She had hoop earrings so big I could have hanged myself with them, which I thought would come in handy if the haircut went as horribly as I suspected it would. Okay, again, this is supposed to be a true story, but I have a hard time believing, like, it was that bad. And again, I know he's probably exaggerating for comedic effect, but this is a memoir. It is supposed to be true life, and I just wish he wouldn't exaggerate so much. Especially because this is supposed to be a look into the true him, which is not the true him if he keeps exaggerating, like he does in his videos. She took a sip of the world's biggest Starbucks Frappuccino and let out a small, uncontainable burp. This was going great. Destiny. So what do you want? Me. For you to tell me that you are just another sassy front desk person and Destiny is still in the back screaming at her baby daddy. Nope, I'm your Destiny. That pun is particularly terrifying. I'm going to use the restroom. I'll be right back. At that moment, I wished I was in a horror film because I'll be right back usually means you aren't going to be back. You're going to die. Uh, okay. I wished I was dead. Wow. Um, he could just leave the salon and go to a different one, but I guess he's just going to wish he was dead over a haircut. A haircut that hasn't even happened yet. Now I know what you're thinking. Why didn't I just leave? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm thinking. Because I have a syndrome called no balls disorder. That's why. 
Basically, I have no fucking balls, and I say yes to everything to avoid conflict. Um, except you don't say yes to apologize, so whatever. I've gotten better at it with age, but at this time I was 18 and terrified of everything and everyone around me, including wicker furniture. Okay, well, at least he gave a call back to that lame joke from before. I went to the bathroom and locked the door. I stood in front of the mirror and looked at myself. I tried to make myself see something that wasn't there. A great hairstyle. Maybe I could convince myself that my hair looked okay the way it was. I could just get out of there and never get a haircut again. Yeah, that seemed doable. I took out my phone and started taking hundreds of selfies. Yeah, hundreds. Again, with the exaggeration. It's just kind of adding... I just wish you wouldn't exaggerate. Different angles, different faces, lots of filters. I was trying my hardest to find at least one picture where I felt like I didn't look completely unattractive. It didn't happen. It made it worse. After the bathroom photo shoot, I decided it was time to go back out there and face my destiny. Me. I need help. I'm scared. Can you please make me... Oh my god. Can you please make me look like less of a lesbian? We're, we're going there, guys. Destiny. Aw, don't be so down on yourself. And people shouldn't judge you by your hair or by your lifestyle. Yeah, exactly. She thought I was a woman. Perfect. At this point, I wanted to just shave my fucking head. Me. Can you just make me look like a guy? Any specific guy? Did you look through my magazines? I don't really think I can pull off Enrique Iglesias from 10 years ago, so maybe just make me look like Brad Pitt? I, again, what is all these references from, like, early 2000s? Like, we get it. Uh, this is 2006. I don't need all the references. Silence. Challenge not accepted. Out of the realm of possibility. Me. Okay, how about Jay Leno? Destiny. Jay Leno? Nobody wants to fuck Jay Leno. My grandmother strongly disagrees, but okay, noted. Just trust me. I'm just gonna do my thing. Judging from her personal style and the zero customers in line for her, I couldn't imagine her thing being revolutionary. Bitch, you're the one who chose to go to Supercuts instead of doing your damn research and going to an actual salon. Again, no Tino shade to Supercuts. But she was my only hope. She grabbed the scissors, then looked at my head for a moment, put the scissors back down, and replaced them with the biggest set of electric clippers I have ever seen. This wasn't a job for flimsy pieces of metal. This was a job for something that could mow a lawn. I avoided looking at the mirror because I didn't want to see the damage being done. Similar to how when I eat at a restaurant. Oh, no. Similar to how when I eat at a restaurant, I keep my eyes clear of any reflective surface. Oh, God. So we're going with the fat jokes, and I know he's making them about himself, but it still rubs me the wrong way. I looked down at my lap and saw chunks of hair gathering near my crotch. The amount of na oh, don't say nappy. The amount of nappy dandruff sprinkled hair that was falling from my head made it look like God was shaving his ancient pubes. Thanks for that image. It was of biblical proportions. I then heard something that you never want to hear a hairstylist mutter. Destiny. Oops. 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 You better have spilled some of your Starbucks fat. Oh no, why? Starbucks fattuccino? Why do we gotta go there? On my smock, because if that oops is in any way related to my haircut, I will one star Yelp you so hard you'll have to change your fucking name and move to Canada. Yelp wasn't really a thing back then, but hey, you get the point. Was Yelp, uh, was Yelp around in 2006? I don't know. Destiny, I think I took a little too much off the back. I might have to even it out. Are you okay with that? Am I okay with that? Are you fucking kidding me? You barely, oh, why? You barely GED achieving tacky dress snaggle toothed cunt. No, this was not okay. What? So now we're going to shame people for their education levels when you're just trying to get a haircut? Like, why do we got to... He just goes there, and I wish he wouldn't go there all the time. Me. Sure. Once again, no balls disorder. Like any girl having... Why? Why are we going to... Why are we doing this? Like any girl having sex with Hugh Hefner, I just closed my eyes and waited it for... Wait, oh my god, I can't even read it. I just closed my eyes and waited for it to be over. Because we're going to make fun of sexual assault right now. Okay, um, moving on. I heard the sound of the clippers turning off and a loud sigh come from the disaster behind me. It was time to see what my head looked like. I opened my eyes and what I saw wasn't a haircut, it was a hair massacre. It was bedhead if I slept on a bed of starving rats. It was so short I could see my eyebrows and nobody wants to see that. Well, I mean, he wanted a haircut. Why would he have like, whatever, whatever. Me, it's short. Destiny, yeah, but it looks super, um, sexy. I still can't believe she said that without therping. Therping? Without therping? What is therping? Am I stupid? I don't know what that means. Destiny, you know there is a way to make it look longer. Me, no, I've gotten that email before. Trust me, it's a scam. Oh, great. Dick jokes. He he promised dick jokes, to be fair, and we just got one. Destiny, we could always straighten it. Straighten it? What does that mean? How does one straighten? Like one of those creepy... Oh, why? Like one of those creepy Christian camps that weirdo parents send their gay kids to. So now we're going to make a joke out of freaking conversion therapy. And I'll have to fact check this. I don't know if Shane had come out as bisexual at the time of this book's release, but I, I don't know. I just kind of think it's tacky. 
not the bi- not him being bisexual, but making jokes about conversion therapy is tacky. Me, what do you mean? She whipped out oh what? She whipped out a large phallic object and turned it on extra high. Destiny, I'll show you. Is he calling a straightener phallic? Because it's kind of not. I mean, maybe a curling wand is phallic. I'm reading too much into this. I wish books could have movie montages because the next 20 minutes were straight out of a 90s Freddie Prince Jr. movie. I was the ugly girl and Destiny, oh, why? And Destiny was my slutty sister giving me a makeover because she has to be slutty for some reason. Okay. I was going from ugly to not as ugly if you squint your eyes a little. It was a dream come true. After lots of clamping, straightening, and the scent of burned hair, she was done. I looked in the mirror and I actually didn't look that terrible. It was a miracle. Little did she know she'd created a monster. Yep, because he was known for that swoopy doo for a long time. From that day forward, I've never met a straightener I didn't destroy with my nappy-ass hair. It's, okay, I don't like how he keeps saying nappy. That kind of bothers me. If it were possible to marry a straightener, I would. I would figure out a way to consummate that marriage. It would be super gross and slightly dangerous, but I would do it. I went to my car and breathed a huge sigh of relief. I looked at myself in the rearview mirror and stared at the new me. I wasn't the prettiest girl at the prom. Oh, no! Oh, why? But I was definitely good enough to get date raped. Okay, oh, no. Okay. I'm, like, genuinely don't even know what to say about that because that's so disgusting that he would say something like that. And I love dark humor, but, like, he just goes too far. Like, what? Okay. Bing. My mom texted me asking for a picture of my new look. I opened up my camera and took a picture. I looked at it and shockingly, I was happy with it. I didn't have to take a thousand. I didn't have to take, I didn't have to get 50 different angles. I didn't even need a filter. I was happy with it the way it was for the first time in a long time. Click sent. Wait. Okay. So we were set up for Destiny to make this haircut an absolute failure and he ended up liking it. So he was mean to her for no reason because Again, this is a memoir, so he's writing this all in hindsight. So he chose to describe her in a super disgusting, mean, derogatory way when he ultimately knew he would end up with a good haircut. So, okay. So the next essay is called My High School Musical, and it looks like a sketch of Shane in high school, so pre-weight loss. Uh, it's an okay drawing. I don't really have anything to say about it. It looks like he's in a, some kind of costume, whatever. Lots of high schools are known for something. Football, sex scandals, shootings. Oh, great. So we're, we're going to go to school shootings now. Awesome. Or more often than not, a yearly musical. Yeah, because football, sex scandals, shootings, and a yearly musical all belong to the same list. And I know that's probably the joke, but it's a lame fucking joke. My school wasn't known for anything besides having a principal. A what? My school wasn't known for anything besides having a principal who died while eating a hot dog. I don't know if that's true because of his exaggerating nature of these stories, which again, bothers me because I want to know if that's true. We weren't very good at anything in particular. Nothing set us apart from the rival schools, and we were usually parents' second choice on where to send their kids. The school three miles down the road was famous for a multitude of things. They had a killer football team, and they had no sexual predators on staff. Well, I guess that they know of. Mary-Kate and Ashley even filmed episodes for one of their shows there a few years back. Analogy, if the school district had been the parent, then that school would have been the golden child, and we would have been the child with one leg longer than the other. Okay, what? So we're just going to randomly body shame disabled people, or not even disabled, just differently built people, whatever. But that didn't stop us from trying. Every year our school would put on a disaster known as the Spring Musical. It was chock full of bad acting, nervous onstage vomiting, what? Okay. And some sort of love triangle between a girl and two guys. But usually the girl was thrown to the side if you catch my drift. So the guys get together, okay, we're going to just, okay. It was a yearly event that I stayed as far away from as I could until my senior year. I was one of those kids who would do whatever my friends wanted, even if I knew it was wrong. The number of times we went through a Del Taco drive through oh, why? And acted like we had Tourette's syndrome was countless. Ugh, okay. I know kids do things like that. I probably did things like that as a kid. But maybe as an adult, don't write about that because it's not acceptable behavior. And he could have just not written that. Anyway, the leader of my group was a girl named Tara. She was a fun, loud, free spirit with more sexual experience than most of the teachers. And that's a fact. Because Jane would know? What the fuck? Okay. There was a rumor that she gave one of our teachers the clap. She was everything I wanted to be, minus the clap part. O okay, so we're just going to brush over the fact that she was probably groomed and molested by a teacher because uh, legally that is not a consensual relationship, even if she said she consented, because she was likely underage. So Shane's just going to gloss over that. And again, I know he exaggerates a lot of this, so I don't know what's true and what's not, but he's presenting this as the truth. So I have no reason to not believe him. So I just, I'm just bothered by the, some of the things he includes in this book. 
She wasn't afraid to take fashion risks or hit on strangers. Life was her chem lab, and she was constantly experimenting, whereas I was stuck in remedial math class, adding up the consequences of any risk I could take. One day, she came up to me with an idea that I knew was bad for- Why? Why are we doing this? I knew it was bad from the second it left her dick-sucking lips. Uh, why? Oh my god, why, 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 why? Okay, Tara, we should try out for the musical. Me, what, why? Can't we just pretend we have Tourette's and go through the Burger King drive through again? We did that yesterday. Come on, it'll be fun. That's what you said about searching through my mom's closet and finding that- Why? Oh god, why? And finding that Polaroid of her crawling on my dad's naked legs was the opposite of fun. Don't you trust me? No, I did not trust her. For good reason. This is the same girl who thought it was a good idea to watch water birth video- What? Water birth videos on YouTube while we were eating Thai food. But why? Okay, he just makes all these jokes so bizarre for no reason. Like, he, they had to be eating Thai food. What? This is just the epitome of, like, lol random humor that I think was out of style by the time 2015 rolled around. I don't remember. Whatever. It's so- I don't like- the, I'm, I just don't like it. But because I go along with everybody, my answer was obvious. Me. Yes. So that day, Tara and I went to the auditions, which were being held in the chorus room. As we walked in, she started pointing out our competition. Tara. That's Lacey Barnes. Why? Why? Good at high note. Wait, what? Good at high notes. Okay. S he meant singing. I assumed she meant, like, smoking weed. <laughs> Bad at sucking dick. Why? 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 Why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? Me. How do you know that? Tara. I fucked her boyfriend a few times. Nothing serious, Joe, though. Just during lunch period. Me. Right. Tara. That's Jay Hernandez. Bad at- Why are we doing this? Bad at high notes, but really good at sucking dick. You gotta watch out for him. He always gets the lead. Are you saying he sucks the teacher's dick? No, that's disgusting. Pot, kettle, black, continue. So we're, again, we're just making joke, casual jokes about students and teachers and relationships that are not consensual in any sense of the word. And we're just, that's just a joke. Tara, but the teacher doesn't cast the play. The student teacher does. Me, student teacher? Tara, sorry, I'm not going to read the dialogue tags every time because it's exhausting. Um, he should have just formatted the dialogue, like, as actual dialogue instead of these weird subsections. But he doesn't know how to write, and Simon and Schuster don't know how to edit. So, uh, match made in heaven. <laughs> yeah, it's the guy who graduated last year. I forgot his name, but if he's coming back to his old high school, he must not be getting any in college. So he's going to go sleep with the high school girls and that's just a joke we're going to make again. Jay's going to be on that dick like sprinkles on Froyo. Is it gay that my stomach just grumbled? Oh my god, there she is, Patty Stevens. Patty Stevens was every musical casting director's wet dream. She had long flowing blonde hair, big doe eyes that caught the light perfectly, and a voice bigger than her ass. Okay. And her ass was pretty big. So, But uh, it sounds like we're saying her ass being big is a good thing, which like I agree, big asses, like yes please. Uh, anyway, we're moving on. She always had a different boyfriend who would cling to her side like a personal assistant, feeding her, giving her sips of her off-campus frappuccino. What is up with his obsession with frappuccinos? Whatever. And fixing her bangs when they got too scattered. There were lots of rumors about Patty floating around school. One was that she had super rich parents who'd invented fake belly rings. What? Okay. Another was that she'd had four nose jobs and an abortion in the same semester. That last one was more of a compliment. What? Considering we were all jealous of her talent for multitasking. Um... Given the current political climate, I'm not going to comment any further because I'm going to get upset. When Patty Stevens was auditioning for a musical, she was getting the lead, no question. The student teacher, Raul, the student teacher, Raul, Raul, I'm so sorry, walked in and Tara was right. He looked hungry for his high school glory days and even hungrier for cock. Why? I was doomed to get a spot in the back of the chorus. Raul, Raul, I'm so sorry. Hello, everyone. It's so good to be back in my old home. I miss this so much. Jay, you better get your booty out of my old desk, you silly bitch. So here we are with the gay stereotypes. And again, I don't know if Shane had come out at this point, but regardless, it is tacky. Yep, Jay was going to get the lead for sure and possibly bent over a desk. Raw, let's get these auditions started. Who's first? The auditions went by extremely slowly. For every amazing performance, there were about six horrendous ones that deserved to end with stone throwing and a possible guillotine situation. Then it was my turn, and I was horrified. I didn't know we were going to have to sing that day, so I didn't have a song prepared. So I performed something by heart, something that, if done right, was sure to bring out some tears in the audience. Okay, guys, uh, take take some bets in the comments about what song he's going to sing. Um, I think it's going to be maybe something by Gwen Stefani. I don't know why. It's early 2000s, and that seems like his jam, so that's my bet. Hi, my name is Shane, and I'm going to be singing a moment like this. Oh, my God. I was kind of close. By American Idol winner Kelly Clarkson. What is this man's obsession with Kelly Clarkson? Like, I love me some Kelly, but, like, 
come on. Like, he's just so repetitive with his jokes, too. Let's just say I'm no Kelly Clarkson. After my horrible rendition, I left the stage. Tara went after me. She sang some show tune I had never heard before. It wasn't bad. I was actually impressed. I was so proud that I forgot I tanked and started beaming for her. There, There's our empath, Shane, for you. She sat back down and I grabbed her for a hug. There was a moment I thought she could actually get the lead, until I heard what came next. Patty, my name is Patty and I'm going to be singing Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Shit, not only did she blow it away, she actually cried while performing without missing a note. She was a true diva. She got a standing ovation from her peers and Rawl couldn't contain himself. He squ- Oh, why are we doing this? He squealed with pleasure like a sadistic pig getting branded by a hot iron. Why? Why? Like, his jokes just come out of left field and they're just- Like, again, it's just like lol random humor and that humor was out of style by now. I, it's just- I don't like his jokes. She was seriously born to be a leading lady. There was no questioning it. The next day, the results were posted on the door of the chorus room after school. Just like in the movies, we all ran there after the bell to see what our parts were. There was screaming, crying, and lots of fake hugging. Tara and I made our way up to the door and took a deep breath. Tara, you ready? Me. As long as I'm... What? As long as I'm not a tree, I'll be happy. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'm just stupid. I get it. We both looked and saw our fate. Tara was cast as the second lead, which was amazing. I was cast as Fat Funny Tourist. Fat wasn't in the name, but trust me, after reading the script, I knew it should have been. My only line was, who's hungry? And I was wearing a safari outfit that was two sizes too small. So... Uh, I guess that was what the sketch at the beginning of this essay was. Just like Patty, I was born for this role. The next day, we went to our first read-through. The cast was made up of a collection of many different types of people, but they were all nerds. There were the gay nerds, the book nerds, the chorus nerds, the drama nerds, and of course, the lesbian nerds, because we have to define people by their sexuality, I guess. Although the lesbian nerds weren't in the cast, technically, they were helping to build the sets and rig all the stage lighting, because we're going to continue with the stereotype, I guess. Um whatever. I for sure thought I wasn't going to fit in because I wasn't really a nerd. I was more of a loser. And trust me, there's a difference. Yeah, we know. I wasn't super smart or in possession. Yeah, we know. <laughs> Sorry. I wasn't super smart or in possession of some kind of awesome skill. I was just a normal fat dude with sweat gland issues. The door opened and in walked a large woman with a look of menace smeared across her face. Everyone stopped talking and gave her their full attention. This was our director, Mrs. Welch. For the next two months, she would be the Ursula to My Little Mermaid. Mrs. Welch. Hello, I'm Mrs. Welch. Okay, we get it. <laughs> Mrs. Welch. Hello, I'm Mrs. Welch. I'm sure some of you have heard of me. If you haven't, you will. I don't take this job lightly. This musical will be perfect because it has to be. Anyone have a problem with that? She was a true Disney villain. She had the face of a woman who killed puppies and ate them with a side of children's tears for dipping. Um, except, uh, Corella DeVille didn't eat the puppies. She just wanted to make them into a coat. So, Shane Dawson is not a true Disney fan. Mm, neither am I. I'm not a Disney adult. I just... I'm, I'm just making fun of his joke because it's not a good joke. She walked like a pirate with a wooden leg. She even had a belt made out of rope. What? What does that mean? Do pirates have belts made out of ropes? Am I stupid? Every year she would come to our school to direct the play and none of us knew what she did out in the real world. I'm guessing she owned a shooting range. Why? Okay. I knew this wasn't going to be easy, so I did what I knew how to do best. I tried to quit. Mood, honestly. I went to walk out the door but was stopped by her large and in charge arm. There was a collection of a... What? There was a collection of spider veins on it that looked like GP. What? Okay, we're just going to go with the fat shaming varicose veins. What is going on? Sorry, I got to read this over. There was a collection of spider veins on it that looked like a GPS map of Los Angeles during heavy traffic. So many bold, dark lines. God, what a long fucking joke. Mrs. Welch, where do you think you're going? Me, I just remembered I can't do the musical because I have to do homework. Did you audition? Yes. Did you get a part? Yes. Do you think it's fair to your other castmates to leave them and force them to find a replacement? Bitch, don't be so dramatic. The casting just happened. They could just recast him. Do you think the president can just leave the White House and let them figure it out? I'm playing fat tourist. That's hardly the president. Sit down. But if you don't sit down, I will make you sit down. You technically can't. She flexed her big arm because we have to be reminded she's big. And the roads of Los Angeles expanded. I think it was really good. Ah. I ran back to my chair in sheer terror. A week later, we started doing full rehearsals. We were on the auditorium stage working out our moves and our songs. In between songs, we would sit backstage and hang out while Mrs. Welch took care of her IBS in the bathroom. Why? Why is that necessary? Most of the conversations between the kids were way more sexual than I expected. I had no idea that nerds got laid so much. I heard at least three different- Why are we doing this? I heard at least three different stories about braces getting caught on pubes and two different stories about having sex with a protractor. It was truly enlightening. Okay, uh, pop off, I guess. Patty never engaged in these conversations, though. She would sit by herself and read over her lines. She had a way about her that made her seem better than everyone else, but nobody was mad at her for that. 
Every, why? Okay, this seems like Shane would judge her for that, so it's kind of weird that he's not. I mean, maybe I just have a misconception of him, but whatever. Everyone felt that she really was better. It's probably similar to the way people treat Oprah. You just let her do her thing and don't bother her with your petty normal people problem. I felt a connection with Patty. Okay, maybe he is such a narcissist after just explaining all that about her, whatever. But I was too afraid to talk to her. There was something about her that was sad that I couldn't put my finger on, empath Shane. I knew that deep down underneath that perfect exterior, something was broken and felt sure it was something that I could relate to. But instead of trying, I just left her alone until the big night. It was opening night and our two months of hard work had finally paid off. We had rehearsed every day for four hours after school. Mrs. Welch might have been the devil in a suit made out of human skin, but she was incredibly talented at getting kids to seem semi-talented on stage. If you wore earplugs and squinted your eyes halfway shut, you might have thought you were watching a real show. Because we have to self-deprecate everything. Nothing can just be good. The auditorium was filling up with paying customers and they were ready to be entertained. Backstage, we were all freaking out with excitement while Mrs. Welsh walked around inspecting our costumes. Mrs. Welsh, hike up those pants. Nobody wants to see your ass. Tuck in that shirt. Suck in that gut. She made her rounds until she got to the end of the line, which was me in my small safari costume. Mrs. Welsh, Shane, are you wearing an undershirt? Yes, my mom calls it my sweat catcher. Go back behind that set and take it off. I want to see the skin popping out between those stress buttons. Okay, and if you see Patty, tell her to get her pretty ass out here. We're five minutes away from showtime. I went behind the set and standing in the darkness was Patty. She was hunched over crying behind a fake door. Her shirt was only half buttoned. Why? Okay. Me. Um, Patty? Patty. Oh, hey, I was just getting ready. Sorry, I'll be done in a minute. Are you okay? Huh? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. She sniffed and tried to play it off, but I knew something was up. Looking at her body, I knew exactly what her problem was. She w Why? What? She wasn't fat by any means, but she was soft. What? I'm confused what that means. And the shirt she was trying to fit into wasn't the most flattering for her figure. Oh, okay, so that's why her shirt wasn't fully buttoned. But th these are all, like, things the cost... I was... Uh, I did, like, musicals in high school. I was on the stage crew. Um, but this is all stuff they would have worked out, like, weeks ago in, like, the wardrobe part where they're, like, doing the fittings and stuff. This would not happen on opening night. So, again... I just don't know if any of what he's saying is true, which as a memoir, this all should be true. Me. Want me to ask wardrobe if they have a different shirt? She looked me in the eyes and saw someone who really got her. What I saw was just a person, a person who needed help. Patty, how bad does it look? Not bad at all. I got nervous last night and ate my brother's entire birthday cake. I feel so fat and nothing is fitting. Everyone is going to laugh at me and everyone is taking pictures and video. I'm going to look like a fat pig. You don't look fat, especially next to me. If you want, I can stand next to you during the cast photo. I can even eat a whole cake first. I skipped my after-lunch snack, so I can probably take down a cake. Patty laughs. You aren't nervous? Me. No, because I practiced a lot, and so did you. Even if you went out on stage and were the fattest person in the world, it wouldn't matter, because when you open your mouth to sing, it will shut the entire auditorium up. Okay, I get the sentiment, but, like, he's, he's not delivering of this the way he thinks he is. Everyone will forget about everything and only be able to focus on your voice. You're seriously the best singer I've ever heard, and I'm not just saying that. Really? Yeah, and hearing you say that you feel fat makes me really happy, because it means you aren't perfect, because damn it, if- what? Because damn it, it was getting really hard to not secretly hate you. Okay, um, what? So, what? Okay, I like, I get that, but- okay, she was never the one who said she was perfect. Other people were projecting that onto her. So it's not really fair to expect her to like self-deprecate herself to get out of that mindset that other people put onto her. Shane is just not, he's, come on, Shane. This is not hitting the way you think it's hitting. She finished getting ready. I took off my undershirt and got my costume back together. Now let's go out there and kick some ass. She gave me a hug and we walked out together ready to kill it. The show was a success in some ways. Patty was amazing. Tara was great, and I totally nailed my who's hungry line. Of course, there were some sour parts, mainly when Mrs. Welch got wasted on cheap wine. She just brought wine to this production, okay, and yelled at people in the audience for not laughing at certain jokes, or when Rawl got caught making out with one of the les- What the fuck? What the fuck? Hold on, I gotta, I gotta start that over. W laughing at certain jokes, whatever, or when Rawl got caught making out with one of the lesbian set builders. Didn't see that one coming. What? Why? Why? Why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? But even after all that, it was still a night that I will always remember fondly. If you want to see pictures, just Google Shane Dawson fat wearing safari. What? Just Google Shane. That was such a weird mouthful of words. If you want to see pictures, just Google Shane Dawson fat wearing safari hat 2006. You're welcome. Bitch. Okay. I'm Googling it right now. Oh, okay. I think I found it. Okay. I didn't gain anything from Googling that, but I, it has been done. It has been Googled. 
And with that, I'm going to end the video here because good Lord, that was only two out of 18 stories. And oh my God, if you don't see the problematic behavior already, then I don't know what to tell you. Um, I think I'll do a second episode where I start to read some more of the stories. Maybe we'll cover the whole book if people like this. But I will see you in the next video, guys. Thanks for watching. See you next time.